Illegal elbow. Elbow techniques. This is the elbow. An elbow from here. I'll throw the elbow. Yeah, the illegal elbow. Welcome back, just like that! <laughs> Hey, welcome to Illegal Elbow MMA and more. This is Brian from LegalElbow.com and Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And this is Dan from MMA Aftermath on Facebook and Twitter. UFC 189 stacked to the rafters card. Even with Aldo pulling out, this card did not disappoint, bro. Okay. And, yeah, it was the debut of the the Reebok Unis, which I'm going to have to say it just looked like, here's conformity, people. You know, they could change it up a little and have some different types of style, but it was like one style with different colors. Bam, that's it. Whatever. But moving on, bro. Nice night of fights, some badass knockouts. We even at towards the end a freaking brawl, five round brawl them out that probably is going to probably get a fight of the year mention. But uh, yeah. to start it off in the early prelims, we seen a guy that is young but very impressive on the ground, which is a Lewis Smoka, bro. Dude, the guy looks awesome, man. And took on a, a vet too, man. A vet in Neil Series. Neil Series, very good deep, very good defensive fighter on the ground, pretty much everywhere. I mean, great, great wrestling defense, great Brazilian Jiu Jitsu defense. And he's got, I would say, um, nice, you know, some nice lunch boxes going in his in his fists, man. He's he's a a, a well known dude over there, I should say. You know what I mean? He's not so well known over here, which you know kind of does a little la- a little disservice to him, because people should know about the guy. The dude's he's a like I said, he's a vet. Uh, I don't even think Americans were allowed in the building that night. No, no, it was. Uh, if you're Irish, right? <laughs> but yeah, he's 35 years old, man. Older dude. You know, I mean, as far as the game goes, he's not old, but but Lewis Smoka, man, very impressive, dude, with the right direction and the right. Whatever he's doing, keep doing what you're doing, man, and, and advancing. And it's like this dude has the makings to be uh, to be a runner, man. You know what I mean? To to make a make a, he, his career looks awesome at this point, man. Is what I what I'm trying to say. But well, yeah, you know, Lewis Smoker, man. To me, if he gets some more, uh, hits the weights a little bit more, uh, you know, get some muscle going, maybe he could start finishing some of those uh, those submission attempts that he was going for. You know. Yeah, it was sick. That man. might help him out a little bit. So. His, his attempts, maybe he was battling for position, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you know, because it seemed like a lot of his, uh, you know, and that's the thing, too, with Neil Siri. Maybe maybe that's why he wasn't landing a lot of those, because Neary's, Neary. <laughs> you just take Neil and you put Siri, you put him together, and you got Neary. But, um, no, maybe Neil Siri, his defense is that good. I mean, it really is that good. They were rolling. It was like a, uh, in there. I mean, it was like they were rolling all the answers it's like everything smoka tried neil had a good answer for but it's like lewis smoka just kept going and, and it yeah just, it just showed transitions fucking yeah. everything. Man, it was badass it was, that's the kind of ground shit you like to see too you know yeah man that's the kind of shit you wish from a uh metamorris fight yeah but it's like those guys are, when you get in a metamorris them guys are so skilled yeah, it, well, it, yeah, like a Cornelius, man. You'll see some wild-ass shit out of a Cornelius, you know, but... Yeah, you know, and, and some of those guys, it's like they don't make quick moves because they know the, they know what the other guy's thinking. You know what yeah. I mean? So they, they strategically, there's there's a strategic waiting process in some of those matches. It's like, well, you know, I don't want to do this because I know what he's going to be... I know he's going to know what I'm doing, so, you know, I almost have to trick him, you know, to to fall for something else, and I try something else. It's a kind of a thing, but that's a whole different story. But awesome win for a, a, a Smolka, a new guy, man. Nine and one right now. Excellent win, especially against a guy like Neil Siri, man. People, to make no mistake about it, man. Neil's, excuse me, man. Got some uh, Miller Lights going on here. What kind of freshies you got, dude? Fucking Miller Light, brother. Miller Lights. 
I got the yeah. tall 16 ounces, man. <laughs> Same over here, man. Same. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. But yeah. Uh, excellent win, man. And this guy's got a promising future, man. Watch out for this guy, Louis Smolka, the last samurai, man. Definitely very impressive, dude, at age 23, man. At, at age 23, who looks like that? That that much of a professional, you know what I mean? That's awesome, dude. Awesome. And another young and up-and-coming guy who has a good backstory, you know, helping out uh, his buddy with cancer. They're both battling him in the cage, his bu- his buddy in the hospital, battle, you know, winning his wars, winning his battles. When they were at post-fight interview, he was looking good. Little man was looking good. Um, Cody Galbraith coming in there uh, against the Henry Baronas, which, Brian, we were talking about a Henry, man. kind of looked like a young Nog, or but maybe not like a young Nog, but he had a body type kind of like a Nog, you know? Yeah, his stance looked like Nog and everything, man. I, I, you know, and, it's, and, it, and it proved to kind of be like a younger Nog, too. It's like this dude could take some. Yeah, he's going to be in there with you, man. He, he is not backing down, man. Yeah, he could take some punishment, man. I mean, and really make it look like nothing. You know, whether that's, you know, it's head movement, you know, or just game face for that point, you know, for that matter. But um, nice win for Garbrandt, man. Oh, unfortunately, he couldn't get the finish, but that just shows you what uh, Briones is made of, dude. This guy is a guy to be watched, too. Cause yeah, and I think know. both of these guys have a big upside, and I think these guys are kind of like the future of the UFC kind of guys, you know. Young guys coming in, showing you some promise and some room for improvement early on in their careers. You know, with the, you know, Barona's, it's like, this guy's in there. He learned some more shit. He's going to be a viable uh, fighter in here that you don't want to mess with. And Garbro, for me, if he adds to his already great striking and boxing background and puts some, maybe some, uh, some kicks in there, more, more prevalent kicks, and maybe even some ground game, you know, because this is MMA. You're going to need to learn that shit. He could be a fucking uh, a, a guy that uh, to look out for, man. So, Yeah, Garbrandt, to me, in this fight, looked like, oh, shit. Uh, mm-hmm. I got a guy that I, I – I got a bit of a puzzle here in front of me. That's what he looked like to me in this fight. So I think Garbrandt with the right uh, – tutelage you know what i mean and, and and he's obviously he's in a great camp you know alpha male team alpha male so they should address that they should see that in this fight watch the video and say you know what this is where we need to address your yeah you know shortcomings whatever you know if everybody you know. every guy you face in ufc is not going to be a marcus brimage you know what i'm saying <laughs> right right so you're not going to be able to sit there and tee off on these guys left and right like you did with marcus right you know, Cody. Yeah, no, I was just saying, Cody's still a very new guy. I think he's seven and zero now, I believe. Let me yep. take a quick look here, man. I, I do believe he is seven seven and zero. Yeah. So I mean, that's you know, that's still very new, man. So, and, but uh, it's, it's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Yeah. And Great another start. fight we didn't and really get to. Uh, oh, go for it. No, I'm sorry, man. I just wanted to point this out too. If people don't know, he's also dating Paige Van Zandt. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you one lucky mofo. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But. Oh yeah. But, but definitely a very cool-hearted guy, man. And for the life of me, I cannot remember his little buddy's name, man, the cancer survivor. Been in remission for about a year now, so that's awesome, man. And the kid really wanted to come out. The kid walked out. The kid, the kid came to his last, to his debut. You know, and they kind of made a little pact. Hey, you know, you fight, and I'm going to fight. So we're both, you know, we're both going to fight for our futures. You know what I mean? So, and the kid actually got to walk out with him this time. I don't know if the kid walked, walked out with him out. the first time. When it for his UFC debut, but he did this time. So and and that was very cool, man. That's that's the kid really wanted it and he got it. So that's very cool, man. But I'm sorry, dude. Uh, press on. Oh no, yeah, that is some good stuff, man. And um, we're uh, continue support and well wishes to that little man. And uh, hopefully he gets through this stuff and and fuck cancer, man. Really. Exactly, and, uh, dude. Bullshit. Is it time? Is it time for Mike Swick to hang him up, bro? Uh, it looks like it is. I mean, it was a decision loss, so it's not like he got his ass handed to him. And, and Gar- from what I understand, Garcia is a pretty good dude. I don't know a shit ton about the guy. You know what I mean, because how many a- Alex Garcias do you know of? I mean, well, maybe Mike probably. Swick's future li- lies in another organization. Put it that way. Well, it could be, but he's also 35 years old. So I mean, you know what you're saying is not that far off. It's like Mike Swick, uh, like we talked about, uh, 
show prep. He's he's good. He's got a great looking career, but he's one and four in his last five. And uh, excuse me, holy Miller lights. But um, he's all he's what like I said, one and four in his last five. In his last six fights, it's been a span of about literally five years. So I mean, his 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 real the the brunt of his losses have come in like his last five fights. I mean, before his last five fights, he would have been like eleven and two. You know what I mean? So now he's like 16 and five. That's a huge difference when it comes to just a matter of five fights. So, I mean, it, it, it's a slow kind of dwindling down process here, man, which really sucks because I've always liked the dude. You know, Mike Quick Swick, he was one of them guys that just, bam, with a, a snap of a finger, he's got you in a fucking Swick a team. You know what I mean? That's what they knew. They, you know, that's one of the things they knew him for. A Mike Quick Swick got him in a quick, you know, Swick a team. You know what I mean? He was really, really known for that, and uh, that's when a lot of guys didn't didn't, didn't have a full drink and small team, so. <laughs> right? But didn't have a full, well-rounded game where it came to where everybody knows all facets. You know what I mean? He was one of them guys that was really, really quick with that, knew it really well, and and uh, so I mean, it kind of sucks to see him uh, floundering. Yeah, it's a lose, but it's, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, he's been, uh, he's been on a rough road, man. Been a really rough road the last, uh, couple, but it, I like the fact that it's not like he went out here and got the shit beat out of him. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it was a third round decision. So, you know what I mean? Who knows? Maybe he's got a couple more left in him. He can correct some mistakes here, you know, and have a nice outing. If he's, I say if he wins his next fight in great fashion, maybe one more, if not, you know, if he loses the next fight, just just call it, man. Call it, brother. You know what I mean? But I got I got high hopes, but in real being realistic about it, I, I I'm not going to take it much further than that, man. But no, but uh, I fucking I texted you last night. Somebody called out the immortal. I forget who it was. I got I got it on the message. I'm gonna look on the messenger. But in the meantime, uh, the immortal coming in taking care of business. Tim Means is somebody that you don't mess with usually. But Matt Brown's been on kind of like this mission thing, man. The only people, the only two fighters that uh, a Mike Brown on his little journey, on his mission, has lost to is uh, a big rig and uh, a Robbie Lawler, you know? You said Mike Brown, but I know you meant Matt. Matt Brown. (laughs) Right, that's fine. No, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows who you mean, but. I don't even yeah. know if I don't even know if Mike Brown's fucking fighting anymore. Dude. Yeah, I don't think he is. <laughs> but but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, he's portal. lost to all the top dudes, that, and it's it, it, you, that's why you can't take nothing away from him because you know with a little bit of improvement he'll be back up there himself. You know what I mean? So, I, yeah, I thought it was too too ramp too too high up of a match for Tim Means. Maybe Tim Means called for this and said, "Hey, I want to fight him whatsoever." What I who knows? But I thought. Excuse me, they were pushing Tim Means up the ladder a little too fast. Well, it's just my opinion, but because this last fight, but all just called out fucking an immortal. So, oh, him. that's right, like, that's right. Which, yeah. which, uh, I'm hey, sure that's a great idea, man. I'm not great really sure. saga, great run, immortal. But you better knock his ass out because if he gets you on the ground, this could be problematic. But we also have to remember. You know, Matt Brown is good, is versatile on all aspects, but a Jorge Masvidal, I would have to say his ground game is awesome. One thing I do want to mention before we move on, man, Tim Means was taking on uh, guys like George Sullivan, uh, Diego Lima, uh, Marcio uh, uh, Alexandre. I mean, uh, Hernani Perpetuo. I mean, dude, come on, really? You, mm-hmm. you fight those four guys that are, you know, I'm not saying they're nobodies, but you go to a Matt Brown from them? I'm not sure that jump was really justified, man. I don't, I don't buy it. I think, it, I think UFC did a disservice to Tim Means with that, that fight. That's just me. But, but at the same time, it's like you know, maybe the dude needed a jump in order to prove, you know, prove himself or whatever. But at the same time, it's like you, you took him from, you know, he, he had a loss to Neil Magny was his last loss. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of a, a, a question right there. You know, he lost to Ori Masvidal. You know. <laughs> a guy we were just uh, discussing yeah, earlier, just, but... Last time I seen Mausadol fight was against Cornelius and uh, 
Meta Morris, and he just looked huge. But then again, Cornelius is probably a buck fucking 40 or whatever, you know, so. Right, but you mentioned uh, Masvidal calling out uh, Matt Brown, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's that's nuts, dude. I mean, I mean, and let's let's go ahead and, and recap that one because we didn't get, you know, we. I, that's kind of like a. That's kind of like to me him calling out uh, Masvidal calling out a Matt Brown is kind of like a business decision in my opinion. Because he knows if he gets a fight with a Matt Brown and he beats a Matt Brown, he catapulted himself into contention, man. Because Matt yeah. Brown is in fucking contention, man. That's a serious... Matt Brown's probably like four, three or four, or maybe even two right now, dude. So... What, number two? Ranked. Oh, shit, dude. I wouldn't say he's that high, but yeah, you could be right. I, I don't know. Oh, uh, but... he might be three then, maybe. Let me let me look. Because you're talking about the same... fucking incorrect... Because he's had fights with Big Rig and he's had fights with um, uh, what? Yeah, you're talking. About, yeah, you're talking about the same weight class as Robbie Lawler, uh, Hendricks. Yep. You know, and Roy he's McDonald. only lost to those two. So I'd say he probably he's probably a five, maybe a four. Yeah, he's five. He's five. Okay, right. yeah, yeah. So you're you're actually closer than I was thinking. So yeah. Well, he might have been up there to a tour, you know, to get those fights with a Hendricks and a and a. A Lawler, you know, after he went on a, what, a nine-fight uh, win streak, so. Right. I mean, his last, what is it, the last 12, he's nine and, or whatever, ten and two, probably. I mean, that's ridiculous, dude. That's yeah. awesome. And that's oh. why you're saying, you know, a Mezval coming in calling out a Matt Brown might he be must, a mistake, but he we must cannot see something sleep on a Mezvedal's ground game. No, know? no, and I'm, that's what I'm thinking. He must see something that maybe we don't see. Maybe he sees a hole that he wants to exploit. You know, I don't know, man. But, I mean, you know, in straight stand-up, I, I think it could be a pretty sweet match. But Matt's going to take it to him. You know what I mean? And Masvidal, we know on the feet he has a tendency to sit back and, and do the kind of, like, what we didn't like about, uh, uh, shit, man, Gunner's last fight. The, yep. weight, the weight, like you said, the weight and bait. You can't be doing that anymore. You know, and I think Aurea uh, Masvidal has done that too much in the last couple. And it's costing him. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, moving he's going to have to be a little more, avanta- you know, not advantageous, but a little more uh, ballsy when it comes to the output here. You know, he's going to have to push the pace is what I'm saying with a Matt Brown and get that to the floor. Because a Matt Brown, you know. He proved in the Tim Meads fight, hey, I got what it takes when it comes to elbows. You want to throw elbows with me? You know, he said that in the uh, post-fight press conference. He said, Tim Meads throws some nasty elbows, but I had to prove, you know, and a lot of people don't know that you want to go elbows elbows with yeah, me. Yeah, elbows I'll, to I'll... elbows, and they both were throwing them, but Matt yeah. Browns were hitting fucking solid. So Yeah, that's what Matt Brown said. He's like, anybody in this division, you want to throw elbows with me, let's go. He's like, yeah. you know, you're, you know. You're not going to be throwing elbows with me, especially, you know, so. Speaking of non-definitively wins, man, kick us off on this epic battle of the last 10 years, in my opinion, dude. Oh, dude, this is fucking war incarnate. You could probably put it right up there with kind of like a Roman battle without the fucking swords and the axes and shit. Just two guys in there to the death, almost, it seemed like. Because, you know, even the victor didn't walk away unscathed, okay? Oh, he's very He got scathed. pressed to his limits. <laughs> yeah. He was on the fucking Weeble Wobble horse, okay? Yeah, he was out he, on the ice quite a bit, yes. dude. Quite a bit. And after this fight was over, before we break it down, you could see on the octagon floor the proof of what just happened here. And that tapestry, actually, in my opinion, should go up in the UFC Hall of Fame, bro. That fucking whole floor canvas should be put up on a big fucking wall, bro. Yeah. Of what fucking happened there that night, man. This was one of the better cards, top five cards in UFC history, possibly. With these flying knee knockouts, dude. Stacked card. Um, and then this right here. The true 
really the true main event, dude. Okay, the true main event. You know, the, uh, you know, without Aldo being there, this right here, I was like, man, this is what I want to see now. Yeah, the, for me, and, this is the this is the main yeah. event. Yeah, definitely. And, and, it it could have completely been on a different card. They could have taken the main event and stripped it right away, and I still would have loved this card, dude. It still would have been a tops card for me in the last at least five years. And, and, and we, 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 we break really break this down before we get into the the X's and the O's and uh, or the the fight itself. It's the history of these guys and who they fought, bro. Like a Robbie Lawler, you know, we, we, you know, a Jake Ellenberger, okay, a Hendricks, we know that. He fought Rory McDonald before, split decision. Yeah. You know, um, so he's been in there with the Matt Browns. And then we look over at a Rory McDonald, we see, you know, same kind of, uh, you know, when it comes to a, uh, we got a Woodley over here. We got a Damian Maya where you're like, I don't know. You know, uh, a Jake Ellenberger, you know, he's beating a Jake Ellenberger. He's beating a washed up fucking BJ Penn. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay. But to me, Roy McDonald had improved so much, especially in that Tyron Woodley fight, dude, that I thought he was prepared for this fight. And he was. And at certain times, I think he was winning this fight, bro. Yeah. Oh, no. Definitely, man. Definitely. I think uh maybe first round and a good portion through the second round Robbie Lawler was pretty much on point with his with his jabs and kind of like straight straight lefts I want to say you know what I mean I, I, it's his jabs no, the and lefts his... are the ones that really fucked his face up dude yeah I think that was one of the ones that really actually finished the fight but um his straight left is is just sick, man. You know, and on top of his jab, and the same with uh, same with uh, Rory too, man. It's these guys have got, you know, Lawler has got. I think people he's he's very underrated when it comes to his just straight punching power. You know what I mean? I I shouldn't say underrated. I shouldn't say that at all. But I think people don't realize the impact his his jab has alone. And before you continue, let's factor this in, people. The first round, and maybe even uh, a few minutes into the second round, it was a feel-out process where they really didn't start connecting. So yeah. you have to say, hey, it took even less time for him to look like that, dude. You know, it, it took even less fucking time. Yeah. It's like, I would say, well into the second, you could really see that yep. red, red mask he had around his eyes. Talking about a... a yeah. It, a and, and Robbie Lawler took a little bit longer until you seen his effects, you know. Yeah, yeah. getting into, like, the fourth is where you could really see, holy shit, you know, I don't know whether it was the fourth or fifth, and he split his lip, just fucking... Mm, yeah. It was nasty. I was like, you're dude... Like, yeah, yeah, you pointed that out. You're like, what? what's going on with his lip? I'm like, I can see that, but I can't see what's going on with it. It almost looked like he had a big... A beak. Yeah, like a big piece of spit on his lip or something. I thought maybe he just, you know, spit a little bit and it just gathered on his lip or something because it looked real, like bright and white to me and then i looked at it closer i'm like holy shit his lip is split his all the way up to his damn nose yeah. almost his lip is split wide it was yep. nasty man nasty but the one thing that i thought really almost creeped it out and made it almost like the walking dead is when robbie lawler's or excuse me i i, I did it i did the same thing in the pre-fight dude I'm switching the damn names around. Man. Yeah. Robbie close. Lawler, Rory McDonald. It's not that much of a difference, but when you're on the fly and you're talking about these guys, it it jacks me up. But anyway. Robbie, um, Rory, Rory, Robbie, Robbie, Rory. Right, Rory, right. Rory. <laughs> Robbie McDonald and Rory. <laughs> but uh, Rory McDonald, his. Uh, but Rory McDonald started looking like with the red mask and all that. It was just like some irritation around his face. But when you get into like the fourth and the fifth round to when Robbie Lawler actually started looking like he was winning the fight, he caught him with a head kick, you know, and, and uh, going into the fifth, you know, and I know I'm probably pressing ahead and I don't mean to, but but I'm just pointing out at the way they looked. He looked like a friggin' zombie, dude, out of Walking Dead. It's like, yeah, he looked white and pale, dude. Yeah, really, really like, white. Was like. This guy has lost so much blood, man. He's been leaking for like two rounds now, straight. Yeah, and he dug that deep to almost almost knock the champion out. Yeah. 
You know, Robbie Robbie Lawler. I thought it was over for Lawler once he was once he was on ice skates like that, and he was on ice skates like that for a long time. And once yeah. once towards the end of the round where he started to, I think that maybe was toward the end of the third, and in the fourth he found his footing again, and then maybe in the fifth is when he started to turn it up. I'm not I'm not. Shit, God, Robbie Lawler is a bunch of tough, tough son of a bitch, dude. Both of these guys, man. Yeah. I I have a newfound respect for Robbie Rory McDonald. I almost said yeah. Robbie McDonald, but <laughs> <laughs> Robbie <laughs> fucking butchering. Yeah. Yeah. Robbie McDonald, baby. No, but I mean Rory McDonald. It's to me, it's almost like you know. And I said it in the pre-fight. If he doesn't win this fight, I don't want to see him in in these these top fights again. Yeah. But it's at the same time, it's like he proved a lot in that fight. And I, I got to give a serious hats off to the guy because, you know, we saw at the end of the fight when that, that chick, you know, like the, the whatever, the jug model, she yeah. came up with her fucking huge cans uh-huh. and her blonde hair and everything else looking about 67, yeah. you know, came up, you know, and, and applied. It looked to me. I a can't, big old diaper on his nose. Yeah, I can't say exactly what she did, but it looked to me like, okay, guys, the guy's nose is fucking smashed, okay? And yeah, you come up and you're hard. putting pressure on it. It's like, let the guy relax for a minute and gather well, he himself. Relaxed, he fucking passed out from the pain after she yeah, did that. He, like. She comes up and she puts pressure on it, and he go out from the pain, he goes backwards again after being brought up by uh, uh, the the ref, uh, McCarthy. McCarthy helps him, helps, him get, helps him lean up, you know, to where it's like you, you can't lay back. You know, you're just going to be swallowing blood and whatever, just – you know, he, lean up, get your bearings about you, and and let's see. You what, know what a cut man would have done? He a cut man would have came in there with a cold compress, not a fucking wadded diaper, a uh, cloth diaper coming up there. Uh, he would put some cold compress, got some water, flushed the blood away, and and wiped over the top of the skin to wipe all the blood away, dude. We yeah. see it every time. We've been watching boxing for how long? We know how the cut guys work. We've seen it. What is she doing? A dry, a dry fucking diaper rag that eventually, to, oh, he, he goes back because of pain. He just let it go. Oh, no. The, a doctor would have came up and said, no, I don't want to get my dress fucking bloody, my yellow dress. I don't want to get that bloody. A, a, a true guy would have came up there and held the back of his head and, and would have, you know, cleared off his face in his yeah. passageways, dude. They were saying too in that in and after all, all said and done, and he went he went down in, in excruciating pain, whatever, yeah. and, and was done with the fight. They were saying he didn't know what year it was. I bet. And it's like you know what? Talk about warrior fucking status. Don't yeah, ever get after the, that I'll last shot. I think survival instincts clicked in, and he just kind of you know went down and said you know no mind <coughs> thing. Yeah. But he was just yeah. you know how much pain I couldn't even imagine the pain, dude. From no. that last, last jab, dude. I had given up long before that, man. I got that. The guy's got my total respect. And obviously, mine, yeah. yours, and a lot of other people's, man. But holy shit, And man. that being said, it takes us back to what I was just talking previously before we went into the break is the fucking head movement aspect of it. You know? Yeah, it really wasn't there, man. Weaving, the dodging and weaving and fainting and, and stuff that boxers do to be – to um. You know, not only survive longer, not take as much damage, but faking their opponent out and their opponents hitting at air. You know, kind of like a, Muhammad Ali made a, Muhammad Ali made a living off of it. He yeah. was a little more drastic, of course. Right. But you can use head movement, and ducking and weaving, kind of like a sugar way, ray or whatever, and and not sugar take this fucking too. punishment. I'm going to take uh, two jabs and give you a kick punishment. Shit, dude. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's um, it, it's like I I I want to equate it to kind of Robbie Lawler is that good and, and kind of uh, yeah in surprise fashion is able to pull those off you know and because uh, the difference we have with these two guys you know Robbie Lawler has been in the game a lot longer um, not saying the guy's old by any means but uh, Roy McDonald's 25 18 and three. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, you got a guy like uh, uh, Robbie Lawler. You look at his age; he's a little bit older. He's got more experience. You know, he's been reinvented his style. Yeah, you know. age thirty-three. He's eight years a senior. 
you know, 26 and 10. He's been through some losses. He's been through some some. He's been knocked out once. He's been through some some decent losses, but I mean, those are those you can you can chalk those up to really big learning experiences, especially this time around in his UFC career, his second UFC career. He's got one loss, man, one loss out of excuse me uh, eight fights. He's seven and one right now in UFC, you know. So I mean, it, it's. Rob, Robbie Lawler is proven right now at age 33, even though this guy has taken taken on such huge names in Strike Force and UFC in the last five, six years. Giant names. Yes. So Warrior status is, right now for me, Robbie Lawler is probably, if not one or two, the baddest motherfucker in his division, dude. This motherfucker is, I don't even think, like I we were talking before the show, we, we, we touched on a little bit. I don't even think Hendrix, Hendrix was on the side of his seat after this happened, said, dude, I don't even want none of this. Really. I don't see why he would want any of this, man. Yeah. It's like, dude, you better come in at tip-top shape. I don't want to hear anything about fucking weight cutting. This better be some serious shit if you even want to sniff this belt ever again. Yeah, I don't think you should get any kind of a title shot anytime soon either. You we're sitting I mean? at a Robbie Lawler who has redefined his, the way he fights, figuring motherfuckers out. You, like you said, this badass jab he's got. Sitting at 33 years old, dude. This guy is, man, after this fight, with I had Roy McDonald, bro. I had Roy McDonald winning this fight. And what he did, and after we seen a Tyron, a, a Rory McDonald dismantle a Tyron Woodley, where Tyron Woodley couldn't even pull the trigger, bro. Yeah. Fused, frozen. Yeah. And we've now, seen him in that in that position before, though. You know what I mean? We we've seen yep. him in him in that position before. You know, against against guys that aren't even on the map anymore. You know what I mean? You know, like and, and Nate Marquardt. Mm. Nate Marquardt and Strike Force just fucking decimated him. You know what I mean? Which decimated really means less lessened by ten. <laughs> I remember that's <laughs> that's why when people say decimated, which I've said it before a lot of times, really it, it's not the meaning that people think it is. He decimated him. Sounds decimated. good though. Yeah, it does. But decimated really actually really means lessened by ten. It's all it really is. It's ten hit points. Uh, right, right. <laughs> if he was a wizard, he'd have been knocked out, man. If he was a fighter, maybe he would have withstood, but he'd have been. On but, the brink of death, no. But yeah. get back to Robbie Lawler, man. I just think he's just one of the <laughs> baddest dudes on the planet right now, man. And, and Big Rig, if they're going to give you another shot at him, dude, you just better bring everything you got. You better be in the best condition that you've ever been in. Well, his last win, you're talking about Big Rig. His last win is against Matt Brown, and that was March of 2015. So and Matt Big, Brown didn't Big lay Rig, down. No. No, it was a decision win. He couldn't knock out a Matt Brown. Fuck no. But it was only a three round fight. So you know, and be going into a, a you know a five round fight. Who knows? Matt Brown might be able to capitalize. Who knows? But I mean, I don't think Johnny Hendricks should get a title shot off of Matt Brown. That's just me though. The UFC making that fight happen is entirely possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because he lost. Excuse me. He lost his belt to Robbie Lawler. And uh, which I thought was really kind of kind of weird. Not want to take anything away from anybody, but I thought Robbie Lawler won their first fight, and I kind of questioned Robbie Lawler a little bit in the second fight. But the wins are exactly opposite of what I thought. So I thought Robbie Lawler got fucked in the first fight, and then the second fight I thought Robbie Lawler kind of lacked a little bit, but I was glad that he won because he got fucked in the first one. So you know what I mean? It, it's Maybe on my part, I need to watch that second fight back or something. But they were both so damn close. So maybe with a win over Matt Brown, if UFC does put that fight together, I just don't. I don't think I don't see Johnny Hendricks beating him. I just don't. You know, when you got fights like like this past Saturday, though, how much how much shit are we taking off Robbie Lawler's career? You yeah. know. With a, with a, a bludgeoning. Well, well not on only both this fight. Sides. How about the fights with him against Big Rig? You know, right? You know, what shots. I mean, shots. The shots been taken. The you know, just the the beatings that are happening. You know, on 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 both sides. You know, Big Rig's been known for his for his knockouts, but at the same time, let's look at it this way. 
He's eight knockouts, one submission, and eight decisions. And we haven't seen the same power after he's came back after his fucking uh, bicep surgery. So, you know, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But... That's no, that's a great point too, man. He's decisioned every fight since uh, knocking out Martin Campman. and that was that was you know late, very late, 2012. So he hasn't knocked anybody out in, geez, man, what three years? Over three years. So no, no, not you know. Two and a half, I guess. He hasn't knocked anybody out in the last five fights. And we're talking about a powerhouse, dude. This guy's known for his strikes. I don't think his strikes are, are what they used to be, man. I mean, really. Yeah. Let's look at it, you know. But he's gone against St. Pierre, Lawler twice, and a Matt Brown. And Carlos Condit, you know. Well, we'll see. I don't know who's next on the fucking chopping block for a Robbie Lawler, dude, you know. Yeah, you know what? I don't want to see Robbie Lawler anywhere near a cage. No, 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 no. I'm just saying down the road. I, yeah. If I don't see him at all for the rest of the year, I wouldn't mind, dude. The guy I, I don't. heal up. And... Yeah, I'd be cool with him him showing up a year from now. And Roy yeah, McDonald, dude, man, fight. his fucking, the way he looked, man, his career's in jeopardy, dude. Holy shit. Dude, the way, you know, seriously, dude, and that, that's, that's, I'm glad you said that because to me, dude, Roy McDonald, really, it's like, I'm not sure whatever doctor was in that corner was really doing their job or what, you know, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. You know, none of us are doctors, but we can only talk about it from standpoint. You know, from where I'm looking, the dude looked like a friggin' zombie coming in the fourth, fifth round. What? He had lost, I think, the white pale look, though, and maybe him losing a lot of, uh, I don't know, man, just the ability to, to, to even counter dodge put your hand up or anything with that left yeah. man. He just he, he did not have an answer for that fucking thing man yeah i don't know if it's a thing where you you know they can kind of gauge whether yeah. you've you know whether they can look at you and, and kind of gauge whether you've lost too much blood or not which i'm sure they can i mean like i said i'm no doctor but if they can gauge how much blood you've lost whether it's too much or not you know, which that's what I'm kind of putting a little bit of faith into that they kind of know what they're doing. But it's like at the same time, it's like the dude look like a freaking zombie going into, let's say, at least the fifth round. Dude, look like a if, if anybody wants to wonder how much blood that he lost, we can just look on the fucking on the floor of the cage. Well, the whole night was bloody, though. There yeah. were some other bloody fights. But the, what you know. the rain, the splatters all over that looked like it was raining blood was from Rory McDonald, dude. Right. Which, which mind you, is a Slayer tune, too. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've we've ran down this fight one side and mm-hmm. down the other, man, and I, it, it deservedly so. Its own show, but... yeah, <laughs> deservedly so, though. It was an awesome, epic fucking fight, man. Shogun, I'm sorry, Shogun, Hendo, guys, I'm sorry, it's been squashed. You guys have been overtaken yeah. in, terms, in terms of epic battle. Yeah, I don't, I, that's well, not even least, a, a question. Dude. Yeah, they're, they're, well, they can go ahead and take a number two spot, you know what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to totally shit on them, because that was, that was an epic battle. But this tops it by, by easy. Leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds, thank you. Absolutely, man. Steadfast. God, beer. All right, people, thanks for tuning in, man. It was a blast. Don't forget to check us out, uh, MMA Aftermath on Facebook, MMA Aftermath on Twitter, also Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And uh, head on over to IllegalElbow.com. Check out the top 20 heavyweight list and the heavyweight forecast and all the extras and new stuff that Brian's been putting on. That's IllegalElbow.com, people.